Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm in the Andes Mountains of Peru, about an hour drive outside of Cusco. It is absolutely stunningly beautiful. Today we have a once in a lifetime experience. We're on our way to a local community, a Quechua community, and they are going to prepare an entire Pachamanca feast. And a Pachamanca feast is a, a variety of meats and vegetables and root crops all grown locally, uh, which are cooked in a traditional Peruvian, pre-Columbian, earthenware oven. We're gonna see the entire process from start to finish and then of course we're gonna eat the amazing food. We just stopped, we're on our way, we're almost there, but we stopped at this gorgeous lake. The views are just spectacular, uh, but we're almost to the village to begin with the Pachamanga. just cannot even comprehend the views, the natural scenery, the beauty, the freshness of the air. Okay, listo. Gracias. Yeah, vamos. Vámonos. Hakucho. Hakucho. Quechua. Oh, Quechua. Quechua. Si. Hakucho. Hakucho. The... No. Oh, vámonos. Okay, we got five more kilometers to the village. And we are at a high elevation here. It's like 37, 3,700 meters, I believe. So you don't wanna, you don't wanna jog too fast at this elevation. Hello, hey, Jean. Yes, Hi. pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet Hello. you. Hello, pleasure Mucho to meet you. Mucho Mucho nice to meet you. Hi, uh, how yes. are you? Yes. How's the baby? Did he fall asleep? The baby is sleeping. I yeah. uh, Gracias. Oh, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Mecca. Mecca. Thank you. All oh, the herbs. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Awesome. Walking into the house of the village. Awesome. Oh, there's him back there. Gracias. Sulpaike. 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 In, in Quechua, sulpaike. Is that correct? That's how you say thank you in Quechua. Okay, so here's the situation. The pachamanca, which is the earthenware oven, it's heating already with stones that they collected from the river, smooth stones, the right stones. Wood is going below and then they've dug out kind of a, a pit in the earth as well. But they had to preheat it because it takes a long time to heat. It feels really warm and really nice. But in the meantime, uh, because they wanted to show us the process of how they do, how they build the fire, which is crucial, which is important to a Pachamanca, in a different location, they're gonna show us how to create this entire earthenware oven baking deliciousness. <laughs> they're gonna show us that separately. So that's gonna, but then we're really gonna cook here. That's already heating because it takes so long to heat all those stones. But you said they can, they can grow Forty different types of potatoes here in this town. In this town, yeah. in this village. In this village. Wow! Yeah. Uh, it's a local home. It's a kind of a courtyard. Uh, beautiful grass. The ingredients for the pachamanca are out. The potatoes, fava beans, sweet potato, corn. The choclo corn that is huge, like giant ears of corn, and then the variety of meats are marinating and cheese. These um, sheep. Sheep. Cool. This is alpaca meat. Alpaca meat. This is pork oh my and chicken. Gosh, and they've already been pre-marinated in a combination of orange juice, aji amarillo, which is the yellow chili so important in Peru. There's garlic. There's what else did I miss? Oh, the, and then and then you can see on the top, and you can even smell that the wakatai, which is also known as Peruvian mint, kind of coriander, kind of minty taste to it, and that's just like sprinkled on top of the marinade at the end. So that's all gonna go into the pachamanca. Okay, so the pachamanca that we're gonna cook on is right here, and that's the one that's heating. But then right next to it, that's where she's gonna show us the process of how they did this one first, because it will take a long time. Okay. 
But then first she set up kind of a, a lean-to, almost like a Stonehenge structure with those three stones. And now they're piling up stones in a circular formation. Wow, oh, it's so awesome to see them do this. Just the knowledge, the cooking that's been passed down, everything from the land. They are very good. Especially like with odd stones. Yeah, yeah. In minutes, they have the skill. They have created this like structure which is turning into kind of like the stones leaning in but these are all just like odd stones that they're using and they're just like fitting them perfectly that's like yeah i wouldn't be able to do that that's for sure i gotta i'm getting a little excited i'm, I'm out of breath <laughs> In like 10 minutes, they built this entire structure, only rocks, that like goes all the way. It's a dome, it's a half dome. That's incredible. That would have taken me like, I bet I could try to make that all day and it still wouldn't have, I, I still wouldn't be able to do that. And now they're adding fire in there. But that's just a demonstration of the Inca architecture and the, the design, the skills. What's cool is that, that uh, post and lintel that acts as the doorway to feed the fire into the structure. Incredible. And this one is way, way further along on its way, on its heating, heating journey. Coming in with some herbs. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> They're getting ready to load it. <laughs> Oh. Yes, Julio. <laughs> now they are removing the stones, but kind of delicately. You don't want to touch those stones uh, because when they fill, when they put all the ingredients in the pachamanga, it's going to be like a layering process with the stones. <laughs> Um, and they're going to put the potatoes on first. Careful, flaming hot stones and metal. Alpaca. 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 Gallina. This has to be one of the coolest cooking methods I've ever seen in my life. Just standing in the fumes, in the hiss of those stones, the meat juices. I definitely got splattered by a little meat juice and I'm loving it. It's unbelievable how they're doing this. Oh wow, those aromas of the meat as they sizzle on the stone. <laughs> the strategy 
the like knowledge of all the ingredients, the stacking, and just doing it so fast to keep that heat because you can't waste time. When you, when you do that, when you take out the fire, when you load the stones, you have no time to waste because every moment the rocks start to lose their heat. They said one hour uh, for it to cook. That was one of the most amazing displays of human culinary genius that I have I've ever seen. We're moving over to the other side here where they're also gonna prepare another dish while the Pachamanca cooks. And what's the name of this dish? This, this is the is freeze dried okay. Moraya. Moraya. So we're going to do lawa de moraya. Lawa de moraya. Very cool. This is the process for the, these freeze dried potatoes. Thank you, thank you. The name of that is Moraya. Moraya. The process for getting the Moraya is on the months of June and July, that are the driest uh, months for us and the coldest as well. They will expose the potatoes during the day on a field and it will be exposed to very high temperatures under the sunlight. And by night, the temperature goes under zero degrees, so the wow. potatoes will be exposed to this. So like hot sun, that's and then crazy. like very, very cold, cold freezing temperatures, very and that's what naturally naturally freeze dries these potatoes. And then, then after three to four days of exposing the potato, we get the chuño. Ah. Chuño is the natural freeze potato with the skin on it. Okay. So what they will do is that they will peel some of these potatoes with the feet, like okay. stepping on it. They will remove the skin mm -hmm. and then they will put it into some bags, like that material that is up on the roof. And when they put it on the bag, they take it to the river water that it's very cold and they leave it under the river water for about three weeks. And after three weeks, they can collect the moraya. And they look like this. And from moraya, you can get, this is what we use. What a process. For doing this. The genius of the preservation of these freeze dried potatoes that can last up for four years. So in times of less food, in times of weather change, they still have freeze dried potatoes. That's an amazing process, a genius process. I mean, they're gonna make a soup out of these potatoes. And then a little bit of oil and then garlic and onions are going in. Yeah, wow. Now they're peeling the potatoes for the soup. Uh, these are the fresh potatoes. They're so fast at peeling potatoes, so skilled. Yeah, all you hear is like a, the whoosh of the knife just whizzing around that potato in like five seconds per potato. And then I'm just And then it's keeping the Yeah. That's why they added in the carrots, they added in the fresh potatoes. Those are simmering, or simmering away in the water and they're about to add in the, the freeze-dried potatoes which they made into a powder and then dissolved into water. Separated the extra water. And then finally she just added in the moraya, which was dissolved in water. It's almost like a porridge. It's so thick. Wow, that's gonna be hearty. That's gonna be warming. The soup is almost ready. The pachamanca still needs about 30 more minutes, so we're gonna go see the small farm, some of the vegetables where they grow right out, I think right on the outskirts of the house there. just showing us a small garden with some of the vegetables, with some of the daily ne necessities of the vegetables that grow the herbs right outside of his house. <laughs> My first time to see quinoa plant, the purple. Purple buds, very cool. And then right down below there, that's the wakatai, which is so important for so many things. And that's the main herb that they use to stuff kui before it's roasted. That gives such an amazing fragrance. Exactly one hour, it is ready, it is time. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. 
Patan gua terlihat ya sus ya. Oh, you can smell the meat. Immediately through that steam, you can smell the meat now. Oh, and the fava beans are just wrapped in there as well. Oh, the cheese. And those fava beans are first. Oh, I want to bathe in it. I want to bathe in the Pachamanka. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that aroma has to have healing properties. <laughs> now the rocks are coming off. I believe the next layer is the meat. How are you? And just as they worked as a team to prepare the pachamanka, to load the pachamanka, they're, pre they're working such teamwork to unload it. The meat is out. They're onto the potatoes and the corn, the bottom layer. That is just... Wow! I'm so excited from the food that definitely my heart rate is way above normal. Just the elevation. You gotta be, you gotta be careful here how excited you get about food. <laughs> Seriously, that's not even a joke. <laughs> okay, then all the food is transported over onto the table. So it was on the same table in its raw form an hour ago. Now it's in pure Pachamanga roasted glory. That meat is the definition of char roasted stuff hot stone roasted, the sear. It smells so incredibly good. Um, now they're chopping up the meat. Yeah. Oh, sure, thank you. Wow, we are ready. First, we're gonna eat the soup. They dished out the soup um, and she grated, she uh, chopped in some herb in there at the final stages. It has a really like sticky texture now too. Look at that texture, it's almost like gummy. Oh, oh that's amazing. You can feel like the warmth just going into your soul immediately. It's thick like a gravy. Pieces of pumpkin in there. Mm. That is amazing. Oh, that's so good. Best potato soup ever. What's also an honor for me, an honor for us, is that they are sitting down to eat with us. So we're all eating as, as a family, as a community. We cannot say thank you or express like the, the love and the thankfulness that we, we have for them taking their entire day to prepare this for us, but then also sitting down to eat with us is, this is awesome. No, I want to save it for. They're gonna leave all the food here and then we will take our plates and just pile them high with the, the ingredients with the pachamanga. Cool. Way too excited! I'm like almost shaking. Look at the, look at the color of that sweet potato, man. Julio, this is Yes. Then I try to get a variety of all the different types of potatoes. There's at least three potatoes. Oh man, that can add up fast. The corn goes on. This one is the alpaca. I'll take a. Oh, there's marrow in there. I'll take a bone chunk of the alpaca. Okay. This one is the chicken, I believe. 
The wing is the mutton, I think the mutton mixed with the pork. This could be, this shit looks like mutton. Sweet potato, two different types. Oh, two different types of sweet potato. Two different types of sweet potato. Well, your starches add up really fast. Finally, some fava beans. Turn over on this, this side and a couple chunks of cheese. Okay, I think that is a gorgeous, beautiful Pachamanca plate. A bit of every, whoa. Whoa. Be careful with the balance of these benches. <laughs> okay. The colors, like everything perfectly charred, everything perfectly like fired, roasted. Of all this plate, I have to begin with that alpaca. And I got the bone in chunky. There's even marrow, alpaca marrow in there. Oh, oh wow. Like the beauty of the Pachamanca is the smoky charredness of it. Mm. It's tender. And that marinade. The, I can taste that. Are you eating? Pie. Are you yes. eating alpaca right now too? My first time to ever have alpaca. You can taste the that Peruvian black mint. Mm. Yeah. And the chard. That is a thing of beauty. Muy rico. <laughs> yes, Julio is the man. I have to take another bite. Yeah. Oh, that alpaca. Yeah, you really can taste that huacatay just coming through. It's an herb that's not that strong, but it like penetrates through anything. And the way like some of the pieces of the meat are more crunchy, because they were like, that was probably like the, the part that touched the rock. But the inside remains moist. I'm gonna hold some of that alpaca in my mouth and take a bite of the, the sweet potato. Because Jane was explaining to me that it's also very common to kind of take a bite of something and then mix it together with another ingredient, but mix it together in your mouth. That way you chew, that way they mix together. I saved a little alpaca. Dude, like... The sweet potato. That skin, actually, because it's kind of leathery and crunchy and then the inside is sweet and dry. Wow. Oh, mixing with the alpaca is wonderful too. Um, like the potatoes are not marinated in anything. It's just that stone scorch and just the quality of the potatoes is, it's unparalleled in the world. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Let's try another meat. I think it's chicken wing time. Pachamanca chicken wing. Oh wow, yeah, the chicken is incredible. Again, that same marinade, the orange juice, the lemon juice, the wakate, the wakatai, the, mm, all the aji amarillo is in there too, the yellow chilies in that marinade. It's cheese time. I do, I, at least I did. <laughs> cheese is amazing. Look, this is a type of cheese that kind of like, you feel that texture in your teeth. You can kind of hear it, like chirk, 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 kind of like screech on your teeth. It's so good. Mm. What would be a good accompaniment to the cheese? What would taste well? I think there is a piece of corn down here in this mountain of Pachamanca. Mm, the corn. The corn is milky, silky, and like. It's not even starchy. It's really good and really smoky too. Okay, next up, this must be the, I think this one is the mutton. And you can see how that marinade has just, it's just coating it still. Mm. Mm. This is almost like dehydrated to the point where it's almost like dried meat, really flavorful. Mm. From the bubbly crispiness of that skin, this one has to be pork. Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's the familiar pork skin. But that is like the crunchiest charred pork skin. It's so good. The beauty of Pachamanca is the, the crunchy meats. The crunchy meats are unbelievable. I think potato time, this potato. Oh, 
purple, purple skin and purple on the outside, and then white on the inside. Mm. This potato is very starchy. Really good. Like you can taste the earth, you can taste the land, the mountain in this potato. So muy rico, muy rico. In Quechua, this is somach. 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 Oh, pasa. Pachamanca, somach. In Quechua. It's uh, delicious in Quechua. Oh, yeah. No, but. Other things are so fresh, it's like. Man. Oh, they're so good because they're. Again, they are like smoky but steamed. Okay, we have a. Some more potatoes, some more everything to eat. I'm gonna try this next potato. Look at that char. Wow, but like what I love the most about the potato is the potato skin. To me, that's where the flavor is. Okay, I'm moving back in to my nugget of alpaca. Oh, the alpaca is so good. Look, it's amazingly lean. And like, like just slightly gamey. <laughs> but because of that marinade, maybe that even takes away some of the gaminess. It's just delicious, Daisy. <laughs> it's time to eat the bone marrow, the alpaca bone marrow. Look at that. Oh, the alpaca bone marrow. <laughs> Julio. Awesome. Julio's oh, yes. done already. Cheers. <laughs> yes, cheers. Yeah. Salud. Cheers. Salud. 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 Manteca. It's butter. I got a little bone chart. But that's so rich. That that's when you can taste the alpaca. You gonna smell? Oh, oh that tea and that pachamanca. What a stunning meal. That is not a light meal. That's a fulfilling, hearty, nutritious, a meal from the land. And that was like the most amazing cooking demonstration of culture and like genius technique. It was, that was truly, truly incredible to see and to eat. They're gonna quickly show us after lunch now how they traditionally um, take the wool and then make it into thread and then weave their traditional clothes and cloth. It's an amazing art and an amazing process. Um, and this is part of how Jane empowers this Quechua community and preserves their culture. Um, so you can see they even sell some of their products. Um, we'll take a look afterwards, but we're gonna have a chance to see them make their the, the thread and the weaving. There's four types of wool, alpaca. Yes, we have a uh, llama. Sheep. Lama. This is llama, you can touch it. Lama. This is sheep. Sheep. said one more animal. This is yam. Alpaca. Alpaca. Llama, alpaca, and sheep. the alpaca. So, this is a Yeah. She's going to prick natural soap from that root. Um, and that's going to be used to clean the wool. A piece. Oh, okay, wow. And this is this place. Wow. <laughs> Working on the spindle. Filling up the whole pushka. It's time for the next step. She makes it look easy, but I can guarantee it's not that easy. <laughs> now she has boiled water together with chilka. Is the name of this? Hinaspa chura sonches chayman kaina kasha hina ka chura sonches mordian de kolpa amarilla. Kolpa is its name. So when they add the kolpa, look what happens. Whoa! <laughs> everything natural, everything different colors. The orange, there's green, there's like... Everything is natural. This is the cochineal. It is alive. This cochineal is alive. 
So the most unique dye is the reds, the different reds, which comes from this cactus, which is grown in lower elevation. And then it's, it's actually not the cactus, but it's these little beetles that eat the cactus. Look what she does. Wow. What? Wow. Do you want me to do it in your hand? Wow. To make a different shape. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Absolutely genius. All natural, just mixing in stones and ashes and pigments. I won't even begin to explain everything that she went over in the last 15, 30 minutes. The main points is that the knitting and creating threads and dyeing them, it's been a huge, huge part of their culture ever since the Inca times for hundreds and hundreds of years. Everything has a meaning. What's amazing is that uh, Quechua, which is the language, uh, it previously had no written language, it was only verbal, so at the times of the Inca it was only a verbal spoken language. And so things were depicted as pictures and then even every single design is a, is a depiction of a time, of a event, of a place, of a mood, of a many many different things, important things. Such an art, it's such a, it's, it takes some serious, serious skill. I really should have gotten this hat before at the beginning of today so I could wear it throughout the day. I'm loving this hat. And this is the products that they make, the, all the different knits, which are, which are very traditional, are another part of the way the community earns a better living, earns money, and through Jane and what she does. Oh, that little walk down here, that little jog. Before I end, one more thing I have to share with you is that there was evidence of a Pachamanca, the remains of a Pachamanca from over 8,000 years ago. So I'm sure little has changed in the entire process, in the cooking, in the ingredients used in a Pachamanca. An Andes Mountains Pachamanca is literally an 8,000 year old tradition. This was an unbelievable learning experience, uh, which I am so honored, so grateful to have had. I want to say a big thank you to Jane for arranging this entire experience, for arranging this entire day, and for Julio and his family for graciously welcoming us, for accepting us, and for sharing with us. If you haven't already watched this entire Peru food and travel series, I'll have a link in the description box as well where you can watch the entire series. All Peru is such a diverse, a mega diverse uh, country with elevations and ecosystems and landscapes and things to eat. Um, so it's been amazing. It's been a once in a lifetime. It's been such a memorable learning experience traveling around Peru and eating. And I'll have all the videos in the description box below. If you haven't watched them all, you can check them out. And I want to say a big thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you are not already subscribed, uh, click subscribe now and also click the little bell icon so that you'll get notified of the next video that I publish. Goodbye from the Andes. I'm gonna try to suck in as much fresh air as possible before I leave, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching.